With me today is Mary Blue. She's the author of the acclaimed essay collection, All But the Waltz. She's written three books of short stories, including Sister Coyote, and is the editor of When Montana and I Were Young, a memoir of a frontier childhood. Uh, she is a professor of creative writing at the University of Idaho, and twice has received the Pacific Northwest Booksellers Award, once in fiction and once in nonfiction, as well as the Western Literature Association's Distinguished Achievement Award, and her novel, Jackalope Dreams, which is what we're going to talk about today. It's the winner of the Western Heritage Awards, the Wrangler for 2009. And I want to ask my usual question, what inspired you to write Jackalope Dreams? Well, I uh, grew up on a ranch a long time ago with a cowboy father who expected me to uh, live a traditional life, which doesn't really exist anymore. And I went my own way, but I always wondered what life would have been like if I'd been a good girl and done what my father wanted me to. And so the uh, main character of my novel has done what her father wanted to do, to find herself in late middle age wondering what to do with the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. Well, this is also a book about transitions mm -hmm. because you talk about the old Montana, mm -hmm. the uh, Montana that exists today, and mm -hmm. perhaps the reality of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, in some ways there's an aspect of uh, certainly Montana, uh, probably of the West as a whole, is kind of a grand uh, outdoor theme park. And uh, you'll find communities reenacting train robberies as they do in my novel. Uh, wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful example I had of it because my own brother-in-law is a part-time train robber, oh. and <laughs> and, uh, and gets to ride out and rob the uh, Charlie Russell Choo Choo. And I told him I thought I had sort of uh, overdramatized my train robbery in this novel, but he said, "Well, no, he didn't think so," and gave me a couple of personal examples. <laughs> Well, you also have the, the rodeo as mm -hmm. a, a big The rodeo this. cowboy. Yeah, the uh, boy from the east who uh, wants to be a bull rider and, uh, and came west to be a bull rider in spite of what his family thinks and then is now is in pursuit of the western dream. Mm -hmm. And where do you get your characters? Oh, they come from a variety of places. Uh, I think anybody who knows my friends and family could perhaps pick out a detail or two that would help but you know they start to come alive for me and I don't suppose any of them are just absolutely based on any one person. Mm -hmm. Now what's the difference between writing fiction and nonfiction? Oh that's a long topic. <laughs> <laughs> I talk about it with students all the time and and both have their rewards and uh, um, a lot of contemporary nonfiction is written in such a way that it's indistinguishable from fiction and in fact uh, the writers make things up, and we've had some celebrated examples. Uh, the nonfiction that I teach uh, is is uh, is accurate as nearly as we can make it. Uh, we all know that uh, we leave things out; we can't tell everything. And as soon as we start leaving things out, we've changed the story. Uh, but uh, uh, nonfiction uh, is a way of just really delving into uh, the world around us and understanding it. Whereas in fiction, you get the wonderful opportunity to start inventing and imagining what if. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like creating your own universe. Isn't That's it? absolutely right. And you are, you, you are in charge of your universe. And you, as a writer, you are required to know everything about it. Mm -hmm. Now, I have heard from other writers that characters can sometimes get a little bit obstreperous. They can. The novelist Robert Stone says, I don't know why my people keep doing such awful things. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that that's absolutely true. When you uh, are really doing well with a character, the, you, you realize, no, I wanted her to do that, but she wouldn't have. Uh, she would never have done that. She would do something else. Mm -hmm. Now, you say it's, uh, and, and we agree, it's a, it's a created universe, but it is also a reflection of reality. That's isn't right. It? Well, the kind of fiction I write is. Mm -hmm. uh, I write uh, uh, literary realist fiction. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, it's possible, of course, to have a completely invented world, mm -hmm. uh, a completely imaginary world. I, you know, the Lord of the Rings, for example, which is not my sort of thing, but even then it has to be grounded in the writer's reality, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, simply because it is created by somebody living in this world, I think it does, whether it's uh, actual uh, knowledge about rodeos, uh -huh. uh, but the emotional 
uh, mm -hmm. aspects of it, I think, have to ring true for anybody mm -hmm. to read it. Well, and that's that's the case with uh, with my Montana and the world of the jackalope dreams. The mm -hmm. suspicion on the part of the old timers of the new California residents and mm -hmm. California. I have personally have had students apologize for, me, for being from California, which uh, <laughs> says something about our part of the West. Uh, but that suspicion and uh, uh, puzzle about puzzle about the changes and resentment of changes and mm -hmm. and uh, uh, kind of a uh, uh, a wish to hold time back, uh, that's that's very much what's going on in my part of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, this country has always been one that is in transition with mm -hmm. some people that's not absolutely. wanting to go forward. Yeah, absolutely. We've always had a foot in each world. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's ended mm -hmm. in some pretty bad fights. Uh, so uh, do you plan to write more? Uh, oh, absolutely. I Yeah, I have a book of nonfiction that's probably going to uh, be delivered this summer with the University of Nebraska Press and mm -hmm. a novel another novel in process so oh, absolutely wonderful. yeah now where is the yeah. is the other novel also set in Montana it's no it's going to be an Idaho novel for the most part but really all over the uh, Pacific Northwest uh, following the adventures of a singer in a country western band oh neat yeah now do you do some research for your fiction uh some uh-huh uh, and uh, I tell students research comes in many different ways. It can be in a library carol, but it can also be going out and talking to the right people. And I'm fortunate enough to have a son-in-law who plays uh, steel guitar in a country western band, and I can use him as my primary research person. Mm -hmm. Well, you also have to take trips, I'm sure, and so uh, yeah, make sure it mm -hmm. really yeah. looks that yeah. way. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's part of the fun. Yeah, yeah. The, I I have heard that from many people uh -huh. who've been forced to to go to really neat places mm -hmm. for their. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> at gunpoint, absolutely. <laughs> right. <laughs> Now, what is the title of your upcoming novel? Uh, well, the tentative title is Ruby Dreams of Janis Joplin. Oh, my. So that would be something people can remember to look for. I hope so. uh, I hope so. And you, you're hoping that that will come out next year? Uh, I don't think it will. Uh, I am, uh, my, my uh, new nonfiction book, which is tentatively called uh, This Is Not the Ivy League, mm -hmm. uh, is likely to be out within a year. Yeah. Okay. So that's something that people should look, be looking for. I hope for. so. So, well, I want to thank you very much for being thank with you. us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mary Blue has been here talking about Jack Lope Dreams. Again, it is the Western Heritage Award winner for 2009. You can find it in your library and your favorite bookstore, and you can look for other books by her.